ignorance is bliss, right? That's the way the whole saying goes. Ignorance is bliss. I never quite got that. I mean, sure, some things in the world are so horrible and so hard pressing, and you can be so powerless in having any effect on the flow of things in any way that it might be more relieving to be able to stick your head in the sand about some issues and to be able to just turn on the blind spots and ignore what's going on. It might just be easier to just go about your daily motions and only pay attention to things which are under your control. Never really look beyond your backyard fence unless you're saying hello to your neighbor and asking them how are they doing, but you don't want to inquire too deeply because if they happen to spill or offload some depressing information about some hardship that they're going through at the time, that might be a little bit much for you to handle, yeah? So generally people, I think they, they, they keep their attention fixated on what's within their backyard and within their house, their immediate friends, their family. In this domain, you know, we have control. In this domain, there is a point gaining some awareness of what's going on. There's a point becoming aware of your friends and your family and your colleagues because you can actually have a good influence to those people uh, and in those areas. Not so much the point knowing what's going on in Syria or Iraq or anywhere in the world, Africa, all the main spots and all the spots less known. Even in your own city, all the homeless, thousands of homeless people that are just, you know, sleeping through the cold nights, gradually dying off. It might seem like you can't really affect these situations, these people, these places, so you just ignore them. Let me tell you this, it might not be as perceptible, it might not be so obvious how you can affect these people and how much control you do have. But I bet you, I bet you, a lot of the situations that are hard pressing to those individuals and more to other people who are suffering in the world that we ignore, I bet that a lot of the time things you do and things you take for granted for being normal every day, as part of your normal routine and ritual and your way of life, I bet in one way or another throughout time has contributed, has contributed to the situation that those people are in and the state of their well-being, the quality of their life. You know, when one cup fills up, another cup empties. That's the way of life. There's no up without a down. If you're one of the most wealthy countries in the world, if you're, if, if you're living in one of those places, or places pretty wealthy, chances are you're having to take out of someone else's pocket and from somebody else's land, their resources, and all of this full circle butterfly effect affects everybody. You know, your cup can't be filled without it emptying someone else's. So you've got to realize it's, it's one thing to say you've got no control and you just want to ignore all the horrible things that are going on. But if you're actually contributing to those horrible things, even without your awareness, you know, even just naively or ignorantly, then, then what the fuck? I mean, it's one thing to ignore what's going on, but if you're contributing to it, and then you're, you're just saying, well, I don't even want to think about it or talk about it, think of any, consider any viable solutions or how I can help, but I am more than happy to keep living my life the way I'm living it, to keep demanding the, the same amount that I've been demanding, if not more. You know, if I keep expecting more, I think it would be kind of rude of me to ignore the people that are receiving less as a result. So I think ignorance isn't bliss, especially for the people that are suffering as a result of your ignorance. And I think ignorance is just a relief. It's a relief of the painful burden, the encumbersome knowledge and awareness of how our choices are affecting other people and other things, not just people, animals, ecosystems. Even a lack of right action constitutes a wrong action. If you are aware of things that are going on but choose to actively ignore those things, it still 
constitutes a wrong action. So ignorance isn't bliss, ignorance is a relief at the expense of others. And I think what true bliss is, is becoming aware. Seeking to become aware, not just becoming aware so you can talk to your friends. You know, you, you read your newspaper for the day, you get your overload of tragedies and various happenings, and you spill it out to your friends and you echo it back and forth to go, oh, what a tragedy, what a shame. Oh, isn't this awful? What's happening here and what happened there? Like, that's enough. Like, that's going to, you know, it's like, well, I voice my concern. I obviously care about these issues, so I'm not a bad person. Moving on to the next thing. What are we getting for lunch? You know, awareness is one thing, but it's nothing. Knowledge is in power, but knowledgeable action is. If you take action and you take steps, however small, using your awareness, using this new knowledge that's come to your surface, and if you seek out more knowledge, you can take more effective action, then it, it is immeasurable. And you cannot overestimate the impact that you can have, the influence you can have on people, situations, the quality of life for all. Awareness with appropriate action is bliss for everybody involved, especially when you know you've done something good that's helped someone else besides you for a change in your immediate field of influence. The feeling that you receive so much more abundant that you can't put a price on it. It's so much more fulfilling when you know you've actually done a good deed, even if you haven't gotten paid for it. Even if no one strokes your ego about it. Some things are beyond you. Some things are beyond your ego. Some things are beyond money. And things you can buy on a shelf and charge up at least once a day. Just because it can't be charged. Just because you can't get off a shelf because it doesn't make you feel, oh, look at me, my attention. Oh, I feel like my, my, my vision of my image of myself is being validated. Just because that's not happening doesn't mean it's not valuable. In fact, all the things that need to happen, they won't give you those things. You need to stop plugging things in and looking for new things to start powering up and new gadgets to distract ourselves with. We need to stop becoming so addicted to this religious-like ritual we have of producing and consuming goods and destroying them and burning them up at an ever-accelerating rate. And we need, eat, we need to start looking at the bigger picture, not just the pigment of our lives and the immediate picture of our family and then justifying all sorts of, you know, wrong inactions or actions alike for the benefit of our family because we need to do it. But we need to look at the bigger family, at the bigger picture, the world picture, the world family, the ecosystem, which we survive on, by the way. I mean, sure, a lot of people seem to like ignore the ecosystem, the habitats, various forests, and you know, reefs that we destroy, that we frack. But hey, it's profitable and it will create more jobs. So let's destroy more forests, let's remove these laws that have allowed these forests to live and thrive. Let's just destroy them so that we can create more jobs and create more money. I mean, what kind of thinking is that? We need to get outside of that. Get outside of this whole maximized profit at the expense of everything else. Because life is not money. Life is not profit. God is not money. And worship isn't buying and consuming. That's not what this is about. There is more to life than working five days out of your week so you can have a bit of money to you know, survive and then to spend on various goods and services to keep you entertained and satiated and relieved. You know, therapeutic shopping and all that. There's more to life than that. And the more we all keep running on this, this mouse wheel, the more we keep walking in this revolving door and losing vision of everything, the more everything outside that revolving door turns black and you can't see anything. We're just walking in circles now, doing the same thing, and we're screwing up the place. And it's obvious we're screwing up the place, but we keep on walking. We keep our head in the sand and we keep ignoring. And shit's getting worse. We're not taking the necessary steps to make things better. Slowly but surely some places are. But overall, it's the people which will determine the rate at which we see things improving. But I don't see things improving regards to people and their shared perceptions and their shared actions. 
I see people breaking away in smaller groups. Sure, over here in Australia, so many different cultures come here. There is uh, much less divide and much more of a blend culturally and it's easier for people to get along. But when it comes to investing our time and our attention on issues that matter and, and putting in the energy and the action to foster change, if we're not making leaps and bounds and if we really want to stop the accelerating rate of destruction and it's accelerating, we need to start taking leaps and bounds and that means leaping and bounding out of our single-minded, egocentric, narcissistic existence like we're superior to everything and our family is superior to everyone so we can justify everything that we do and don't do. We need to stop that. We're not children anymore. We need to wake up to what we're already aware of. This isn't about lack of knowledge anymore. You can't blame ignorance. You can't blame, blame being naive. You know, you can, you can just accept that you're a fool to some extent for allowing all this shit to happen blindsidedly while you receive your payoff on the side. Is this thing still recording? It's still recording. Oh, hey hello. man, how you doing? Yeah, good. How Riley. you doing? What's your name? Phoenix. Phoenix. Yeah. Good to meet you, man. What What's are you doing? What's going on? I'm, I'm talking about the world and life and swag. How responsible uh, How ignorance is bliss. Ignorance is bliss, my friend. Apparently. Yeah. What's your thoughts on it? Well, I don't really know. <laughs> I'm just here. Yeah. Just to say hi. Part of the moment. Just, just enjoy this wonderful life we have. Yeah. yeah it's yeah. a good life. There's a lot to enjoy. Yeah. Do you have like a YouTube sure. channel or something? Yeah, I do. Oh, cool. yeah. So do I. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you do? I'm a spearfish man. Oh. Like a free diver. Yeah, awesome. So yeah. you get a lot of like cool ones in the water, yeah. reef shots and, and I, I whatnot. Try, yeah, I try. yeah, it's got to be beautiful down there, all those sea yeah. creatures. What's, what's your channel? Uh, Phoenix M88. I'm 26 years old, male. Okay, man. I'll look it up. Yeah, Phoenix M88. Yeah, I'll catch you around. Hey, brother. Great tidings. Cool cat. So yeah, that's that's what we gotta do. I think when it comes to responsibility is bliss. It might it might like I, I've said before, it might be painful and inconvenient to forego the immediate pleasures and luxuries. Because at the moment we're all being conditioned not to be future oriented, but presently oriented. It's all about the moment and we always seek instant gratification of our ever ever rising desires. But if we can forego satiation of our appetites for just a moment and if we could forego the immediate reward and the immediate satisfaction of our desires instead of you know having all these kind of flash light bulb experiences flash frying pan experiences we can actually invest more time and energy and attention foregoing all those cheap pleasures really and focus on developing something a vision through action that is richer and more abundant in light. It provides more light over time, though not as bright as just getting your fix in the moment. And it'll be enough light to go around. And it'll be enough richer, richness and enough flavor for everybody to enjoy the taste of. You know what I'm saying? We need to live outside of ourselves, outside the pigment of our immediate surroundings and influence and look at the big picture of the world and start thinking, okay, where are the problems? Okay, there's some problems. Do we have the resources at hand, let's just say, you know, hypothetically, to help fix these problems or make them better, best we can? Yes, we do. Okay, what actions would we hypothetically need to take using these resources to make the world a better place? to help our environment, to improve the quality of life and health for everybody on this planet. Not just those fortunate enough to be born in the right place or in the right family with the right privileges. And then once you've got your resources, the hypothetical, and once you've got your hypothetical actions that you need to take and steps, then we're just gonna make a choice and ask ourselves, well, all right, what would we be forgoing in terms of our immediate lifestyle and our way of life in order to, to see change to the overall way of life for everyone on this planet and for the well-being and lifestyle of everybody 
And then once we're aware of that compromise, we can then decide, head out of the sand entirely, no ignorance involved, whether or not bliss is worth sharing around, or whether we are too selfish to undergo the compromise and whatever temporary slowage of rewards that that would entail on us, you know? No pain, no gain. Every time your cup fills, it's emptying somebody else's. And sure, in order to see the cup fill for other people on the planet and for the world itself, you might need to see your cup empty a little bit. But that's what investment is about. It's not sacrifice, because you're not losing anything. You're just not being greedy and so selfish that you're taking everything, forcing everyone else to lose it, and then just ignoring it. You know, it's an investment. And if you can see it as an investment and, and appreciate and know that your compromise is benefiting other people and is making a big smiley face on the big picture of life, then nothing can buy that feeling. You can't put a price on that feeling. And that will be more rewarding than anything else you can get on a shelf. Life isn't about the buying and burning of goods. It's about realizing what is good in us. It's about realizing that the world is full of good people. Even if there's a lot of people we think they're not worthy. Everybody is a good person if they're given the chance. If we can do the right thing, take action, do what is good for our fellow man, and do what we know needs to be done with the resources we know that we have. Making the, the compromise that we accept it's pretty simple. We just need to put our heads together and through our hearts unite on what matters most and return to those roots, return to a life where love is an essential component. Love for the fellow man and not just for the family. Love for the community. Love for the planet and everyone on it. You know, what is a life without love? What is a life without compassion or altruism? Without caring for anyone else, without compromising for anyone else. It becomes survival of the fittest, or survival of the richest, survival of the greediest, survival of the most ignorant. And that's what it's come down to now. That's the reality that we have now. That's the game we're playing now, this, this slavery game and charade of freedom. It's not free. Only those at the top can afford the luxury and the ignorance to have the idea of freedom and snug in their hand. But that's not the reality for most people playing the game, most people being affected by the game elsewhere. The true reward, they're not gonna sell it to you on the screen, so they're not gonna tell you about it. It's not gonna be an incentive they'll push. But it's just something you've gotta figure out. You know, once your head's out of the sand. And that's what you could ask yourself. Uh, you know, if you're thriving in this game, if you consider yourself rich and successful, are you really successful? Are you really fulfilling a great purpose on Earth in this one lifetime? Because at the end of the day, we all die. You've all seen the meme. We all get buried in a hole. We all get buried in the same box. You know, everything that happens here, all the money you make, all your accomplishments, it means nothing. Everything that becomes on the outside really means nothing. But it's what becomes of you as a result of everything that becomes of the outside. That's what matters. That's what you take into your next life. And on the cycle goes. You know? That's, that's what I think is what's worth more investment. Investing towards our soul, to our spiritual growth and fulfillment and health and investing into our mind and our awareness. Even if that means slowing, putting some brakes on our material progress. But really, we should stop kidding ourselves. I mean, we already know. There's always been enough to go around. Just for whatever reasons. It isn't going around yet. And I think ignorance is part of it. What's bliss about that?